Good evening. Okay, good evening, everybody. Just like to welcome everyone to tonight's show. I'd like to thank again Jenna Hari and Mayor Gabo for arranging this show. I'd like to dedicate tonight's show. Lelo nishmat rivka ba chenu rok hashem tinechen ba gan eden. Ben shmetat shor b'tzur chaim. And I also like to dedicate the show lefuash lema for all Am Yisrael, especially for Gabriela Naomi Batlei Amalek. And also, my wife, she's not feeling well the past few days, uh, ear infection. Please, in the merit of the show Torah, she'd feel much better. So, we're still on a high from Purim, and we had an amazing uh, Purim learning event on, on the early crack of dawn of, of morning of the Purim. So, I just want to share with you just one idea. Uh, from the, one of the Hasidic farm, which is called Sod Veshoresh Aha Avoda, which is the secret and the foundation of the of the work of Avodat Hashem, and he writes there based on the Gemara in Megillah, which says Leyudim Aita Ora. So what does he mean Leyudim Aita Ora? For the, the Jews, there was light. Says the Gemara Ora Zu Torah. Ora Zu Torah. Rashi says that Haman made the Gezera on them that they shouldn't learn Torah. And you see from that the importance that there is to learn Torah on Purim. That the fact that he thought he made them that he made sure that they wouldn't learn, then we should also we should make sure that we're learning. Otherwise, we're just fulfilling what Haman wanted to do. Haman wanted to stop learning. And he says actually his advice is that before you leave synagogue, before you leave shul on Purim morning, after Megillah, make sure you open a sefer and you learn something Torah before you leave. And that is exactly what we do on Purim. We make sure that everyone's sitting there and not only we just stay for a few minutes, but we stay for two hours and we have a shear at the end and we do Tehillim. And that was amazing. And I just the final story of the Avnei Nezer, one of the bigger Hasidic scholars, leader uh, in Europe about 100 years ago. Uh, they said to him that they revealed from him in the Shemaim. I don't know if they came to him in a dream and they said to him that, that he merited to have a son who was the Avnei Nezer, that he was a leading scholar, uh, one of the leaders of the generation, because one time he studied Torah on Purim, for one moment when there was no other learning Torah in the whole world, and because of his learning Torah, that was that kept the whole that saved the whole world and kept it going, and that's why he managed he uh, merited to have a son that lit up the whole world with his Torah, that was Davni Nezah. So that is exactly what we did on Purim. And anyone who took part in Purim was also part of that learning Torah. And also, anyone who donated um, definitely had a part of that learning Torah. And you see the great merit that there is for learning Torah on Purim. So that should be to credit to everyone. And we read out all the names. It should all be for that tzlacha of all those who donated. So that was just a disclaimer regarding Purim. Um... On another note, similar note, we say like Yudim Aita Ora Simcha Sason Veikar. So the Gemara says that the Ora is Torah, Veikar um, is Tefillin. I think Sason is Mila, Torah, Mila, and Tefillin. So Ramad Chaliyah says, "Well, why are you saying Torah? Uh, why do you say Ora Sason and Simcha? Ora, Ora, like Yudim Aita Ora Sason." Let me get it right. I didn't want to. So, son, simcha, I hope I'm getting it right. That is the pasuk. So, if it's referring to Torah and to Mila and to Tfilin, then why don't you just say that? Why do you uh, rephrase it with Ora and Sasan and Yika? Interesting question. <laughs> There's always lots of hidden secrets. Right, so what's the understanding over here? Why is it, why is the Pasuk says to the Jews there was light and joy and simcha, simcha sason v'ikar? If you mean that the Jews had Torah, tefillin, and milah, then just say that. Why are you saying they had light and joy and and, uh, and yikar, which yikar was, is the kavod, is the, the what's, how do you say, yikar is something which is expensive but precious, that's the word. Yikar is precious. So why do you say some, they had light, they had joy, and they had precious? Just say they had Torah, they had Milah, they had Shabbat, they had uh, Tefillin. If that's what you mean, that's the question of, of Ramadan Khaliyah. 
And we had a similar question in this year about um, Ayn Tachat Ayn. Do you remember? Ayn Tachat Shen. Yes, Ayn no. Shen Tachat Shen, Ayn Tachat Ayn. Pasuk says if someone, yeah, if someone punches out an eye, it's then not he has literally. to. Yes, it's not literally. You just have to pay the value of the eye. Mm -hmm. So we ask, so why doesn't it just say Kesef Tachat Ayn? Why do you say Ayn Tachat Ayn? If that's not what you mean, just say what you mean. Do you remember the question? Yeah. Do you remember the answer? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, Joe, uh, what about me? Do you remember? You still with us? <clears throat> okay. So the answer was, we said, because when you're paying the money, you should feel that it's as if you're taking out his eye, your own eye. That means you really should be losing your eye. The, the reason why you're allowed to pay is because that we don't believe in making eye injuries, right? But the person who's paying should realize that really he should be giving his eye for his eye. And when he pays that money, he should feel that it's like his eye is taken out. Similarly, when we say, Im kesef talvet, I mean, if you lend money, we said that it's not an optional of lending. It's an obligation. You have to lend money. If you have the ability to lend money, Joe, right? If you've got, if somebody asks you for five pounds and you've got money in your pocket, and you can lend them and you trust them that they'll put you back. You're obligated to give them that money. It's not an option. Or obviously if you trust them. And, but the same thing is with five pounds. Same Jewish thing with five pounds. Sorry? Jewish or non-Jewish? No, Jewish. 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 Specifically to your own brothers. And um, also with no interest. Yeah, and, sure. and, and it's obligation that you have to lend. And it's the same thing with five pounds or five thousand pounds or fifty thousand mm. pounds. If you can lend it and you trust them to pay back under the normal conditions that they can't afford to pay back, and you write a document of uh, that they borrowed money and they you know work out what methods of payment, but it's an obligation. So the question is if it's an obligation, why does it say the word im kesef talvet? I mean, if you lend money, just say you have to lend money. Why don't you say what you mean? Because there are um, um, some uh, um, if circumstances. Sorry, circumstances. Certainly, yes, circumstances where you where you don't have to pay the person. Right, sure. but right, but under normal circumstances, you do have to. So if you have to, then just say you have to lend. Why are you saying if you lend? If you lend, seems to be like it's an option. So that was the same question. We said, why well, then you say what you mean? And we gave the same answer. That that's how you should feel. You should feel that even though you have to give money, don't give the person money because it's a mitzvah. Okay, here's my mitzvah, give it. No, make him feel like you want to give it. You don't have to. I want you to have the money. I want you to borrow it. Hey, please take it. Pay me when you can. Make him feel good about it. Don't make him feel like it's a biscuit, like you don't want him to give him, that he's taking your money by force because you're trying to force him to it. Make him have a good feeling. So... Even if it's an obligation, but the way the Torah words it, that tells us how you should be feeling. You should feel, make you feel as if you lend money. That's an option, as if it's an option. You should pay the money as if he's taking out the eye. So when the Torah now says, The Jews had light, they had joy, they had uh, uh, happiness, they had preciousness. So why did why didn't it just say they had Mila, they had Tefillin, they had uh, Yom Tov, they had Bali. Torah? Right. Why why did you say that? So Ramad Khali says so the same thing. Ramad Khali says that's how you should be feeling. You should feel that the light that is your Torah. The Torah is your light. Your happiness, your simcha, that's Yom Tov. Your sason, that's mila. Your precious, that is your tefillin. The most precious thing you have is your tefillin. The light that you have in your life is your Torah. The simcha that you have is your yom tov. The sason, that is your mila. That's your happiness. We have it. So this is what we should be feeling. A Jew should feel that. You don't say, oh, the Jews had Torah, they had tefillin. No. We had light. We had joy. We had happiness. We had our preciousness. There is our, our Torah, our tefillin, and our yom tov. That's what we have so told today. Okay, you're gonna ask me why am I talking about Purim? Purim was yesterday. Yeah, two days yes. ago. Even two days ago, you're saying you're like way old news. You're like out of date. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's two reasons for that, and one reason is because the Gemara says, which means the day of Purim should not end. 
the message that we take from Purim, we're supposed to take with us through the whole year. And it's supposed to be with us the whole, the whole time, the whole year. And in fact, that's what the Megillah says, in that we should have also the next day as well. Now, if is you look there, at it... Like, yeah. like there's a, um, a Pesach, there's a second Pesach, isn't there? Yes, Pesach Sheni. Pesach Sheni. Is there a Purim Sheni? No. There is no, there is no Purim Sheni. The reason why there is a Pesach Sheni is specifically because some members of Am Yisrael cannot do the Korban Pesach if you are impure. Tame. If you have to be purified. Tame. Tame is impure. In, if you touch a dead body, you come in contact with this dead, mm. uh, deadness, dead life, then mm. cannot take the Korban Pesach. Now, Korban Pesach is, is a mitzvah which is obligated uh, and karet is the punishment. Mm -hmm. So that is very severe. So to, to give people a second opportunity, because sometimes it's not after them is, to be... So what is Korban so Pesach? Are, are we talking about historical... When the, in terms of Beit HaMikdash? Korban Pesach, yeah. Yeah, in the times okay. of Beit HaMikdash, which will be very soon, Bezat Hashem. So you're going to come to Israel, and you're going to come say, Rabbi, I need the keves for Korban Pesach. And I'm going to say, don't worry, Joe, you come with me, you're going to be with me for Korban Pesach, yeah? And I'm going to invite you and your family, and we're going to go together, we'll get a Korban, we'll go to the Quran, and then we're going to eat it together, let us say Now that is only if you're, imp if you're pure. If you're impure, then you need to be to go to the mikveh and make sure you come out of the mikveh before your tara, before Lela mm -hmm. But someone who misses that, then he gets the, the second stage is on uh, Pesach Sheni. Mm -hmm. Now, Rav, Rav Yitzchak Kutna, he gave an example that Purim, we said that the message of Purim needs to take through the whole year. He said there's no actual Havdalah for Purim. Purim and Chanukah, the Yom Tov is, is uh, during the week. And when Purim finishes, there's no Abdullah. And this is because we're not supposed to be Mavdil, the Kedusha of Purim. We're supposed to take the Kedusha of Purim and go with us throughout the whole year. And the same thing is the Hanukkah. So the question is, what is this message of Purim that we're supposed to take with us? I don't know. Okay, so Joe, now I'm going to be talking a little bit about Purim because this is a very important message that we're going to take with us through the whole year. And we've got half an hour to do this. Are you with me? I am. Just me, just me and you tonight. We're going to cover it up. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so I'll be enjoying it. The God says, when he used to need a chizuk in Emunah, in Bitachon, he used to read actually the Megillah. That's what he used to do. Sit down and read the Megillah. It's Aramaic, yeah. isn't it? No, Megillah is mostly in Hebrew. Hmm. Uh, with a few words which are like half your Persian or... Your father read it really nicely. Yeah, he's a... It's really nice. Liana, I do enjoy listening to your father read. Oh, Baruch Hashem. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for the compliment. So, first question is, I'm going to ask three questions. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a message of poem. First of all, it's a Hiddush that the Gon Mevil, now he was a big Tzadik, the Gro. The go, go on with Vilna. So, first of all, Tzachudish that he himself needed a Chizuk and Emunah, you think like, okay, he doesn't need Emunah. But you see, even every Tzadik needs to be with Chazek in Emunah and Bitachon. Sure. But the first question is, why did he read the Megillah? There's a lot of Psukim which talk about Bitachon and Hashem. For example, Baruch HaGever, Asher Yiftach Ba'ashem, Ba'yashem Yiftacho, Ba'botech Ba'ashem, Chesed Yisoveveno. Go'al al Hashem Yavcha, Vuhu Yichal Kelecha. All these Psukim, which means trust in God and have faith in God, and those who, uh, those who have faith in God, then Hashem will do kindness to him. He'll be surrounded by chesed if he trusts in Hashem. So why did the Gaon Mavila specifically decide to choose to study the Megillah when he wanted a chizuk and emuna? That's question number one. Okay. That's clear? Yeah. Good, so we're up to question number two. Question number two is very interesting. The Yalkut Midrashim says that in the future when Mashiach comes, all of the festivals will be Batel, Betelin, Itbatlu, Vime Apurim Enan Betelin Leolam. Strange. Canceled. What does that mean? Yes. Now, what does that mean? You're going to cancel Pesach? You're going to cancel Hanukkah? 
So yeah. what? What does it's it mean? You're gonna be cancelled? It's contradictive if, like, as right. for example, it's, it's all in the Torah and laws and exactly. Oh, exactly. Because really, so strict. listen to this. In fact, the, the, so we're gonna explain. The Gemara in Yerushalmi, Talmud Yerushalmi, Megillah says Rabbi Yochanan says that all of the books and scripture, Nevi'im and Ketuvim, Atidin Libatel, apart from the five books of the Torah, Einan Betelin. And the Rambam says, that's how the Rambam brings this Gemara. And he says that uh, in terms of the Mashiach, all of the books will be Betelin, apart from Megillat Esther. That's the only one which is going to stand. Yeah. So on one hand, all the festivals are going to be cancelled and all the books are going to be cancelled, apart from Purim and Megillah. So why is that Megillah so important? And why is Purim so important? That's not cancelled. And what does it mean everything else gets cancelled? It's written in the Torah, Joe said. What do you mean? You have to keep Sukkot, Rosh Hashanah, people. Pesach. So I'm going to answer with the Gemara in Barachot. I'm going to read you the Gemara yeah, and translate. Tanya. Sorry? Was, it, was there a third question? We're getting to the third question. Oh. We are still holding by the second question. Okay. What's the second question? What does it mean that all of the festivals are going to be cancelled apart from Purim? And why not Purim? So we're answering this by the following Gemara. Ben Zoma There was a Chacham, his name was Ben Zoma, the son of Zoma. He said to the Chachamim, Ki mazkiri nitziat mitzrayim limot ha-Mashiach, v'alo kvar neema hinei yamin ba'im neum Hashem. When Mashiach comes, we're no longer going to say, Praise God that He took us out of Egypt. We're going to say, Praise God that He gathered all of us from all of the corners of the world and brought us to Israel. And the explanation of the Gemara is that one times of Mashiach are not from Egypt because the greatness. The last, ten, the last five seconds. The Gemara explains that Chachamim said to Ben Zoma that when Mashiach comes, there are going to be such great miracles. We're going to be thanking Hashem for bringing all of Am Israel to Eretz Israel, and we're all going to be praising the miracles of Mashiach that it's going to be irrelevant to praise him for the miracles of Mitzrayim. Mm -hmm. And that's what it means that they're going to be cancelled, not that they're going to just disappear. Of course, there's going to be Pesach, and there's going to be Lela and there's going to be the Mitzvot. But it's the, the Mitzvot of uh, the miracles of Mashiach is going to be much greater. And therefore, we're going to be celebrating the days of Mashiach much more than the days of Pesach. And no other mm -hmm. festival is going to compare to the festival of the Mashiach. More than the... Um... The, uh, the exiting of the Jews out of Egypt. Yes. Wow. And in fact, that all the books are going to be cancelled because they're all going to be Batel Veshishim. Now, this leads us to our second question, Jim. I understand if you're going to say, okay, they're going to, the miracles are going to be so great. They're going to be dwarfed by the miracles. The miracles of Egypt will be, you know, miniature. Mm -hmm. and bat, like Batel Veshishim. But what about Purim? Like the, the, the is, is, yeah, but means that there's not in time. It's a halachic concept that if you have something which is 60 times, but if uh, if I put uh, like a spoon of milk in, oh, in 60, um, 60 spoons of soup, you're not going to taste the milk, right? Right, it's got to have an effect, you have to have a taste of it, not uh, it's got to be smaller mm -hmm. amount to taste it. So it's batel. It's still there, but you're not going to feel it. Mm -hmm. Right? Unless you have something which is very sharp, uh, like salt, or you know something very sharp uh, seasoning, which is very spicy, they can feel it uh, 60 times more. But no more yeah. flavor, you can't feel it. But like mm -hmm. an orange, orange is a very good taste, right? But if you put like another fruit, and you're not going to feel it if it's the 16 times more. Yeah. Mm, okay. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, so the question is like this, sir. I understand the miracles of Mashiach is going to be much greater, but why is it greater than Purim? 
it says Purim is not going to be cancelled. Purim is still going to be standing strong. The, it's still going to be reading the Megillah. Now, what amazing miracle was there in Purim? There wasn't any. Mm-hmm. We got into trouble. Haman wanted to kill us. Queen spoke to the king, sorted everything out, finished uh, all over. No major, no major miracle. So why are we saying that the miracles of Pesach and that's not going to be nothing to talk about? Purim, oh, that, that's a special miracle. We're going to be talking about Purim yeah, the whole time. For sure. Why? Uh, why? Not there's, not, there's nothing great there. It was so great, you know? No, no change of uh, of nature. Queen yeah, spoke to the king, been... sorted out, everything was fine, happily ever after. Mm-hmm. So that's question number two. What's so special about the miracles of Purim that's even more than the miracles of Egypt? Question number one, why did the Gon Mivilna study specifically the Megillah? And second, well, why it's so, so to be to be mitchazek in bitachon? Why didn't he read the Psukim about bitachon? So question number two, why is the miracle of Purim even greater than the miracles of Egypt? That we're not going to speak about Egypt, but we will still read the Megillah. Mm-hmm. And now we're going to start launching the third question. Are you with me, Jer? I'm with you. You're going to love this. Mordechai yadat kol asher na'asa b'ikram b'agrim Mordechai d'bgadav he ripped his clothes v'yilabesh sak v'yifar he wore sackcloth and ashes and sat on the floor started crying v'yitzeh betoch ha'ir he ran out of the city v'yizak z'aka g'dolah mara he cried out a great cry and he sat down crying for tshuva to another degree. That was he that was Mordechai praying. You're gonna excuse me for one second, I'm gonna get a glass of water. Yeah, yeah, no, okay. I'm gonna check now. Yeah. Right, do you remember that part of the Megillah? And I was going to say, I, I don't know the Megina too well and the story at all. I don't know it. Oh, no. Oh, no. I know. I know. That's I know. terrible. I know. <laughs> so we should really go through it. We should do a show on the Megillah then. Yeah. Or I should read it. <laughs> okay, so that's your, going to be your homework. You're going to get an English Megillah and just read it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really compulsory because especially what we're talking about now, you see all the other books of the Navi is going to be cancelled. The only thing that's going to be left is pulling the story of Purim. So basically, I'm going to, I'm going to give to you one line. Yeah. story of Purim um, is Achashverosh, his, his wife dies and um, Haman rises to power mm-hmm. uh, and he decrees against all the Jews to kill all of them. He convinces Achashverosh to do that. Meanwhile, Achashverosh needs a new wife and he gets Esther. Mm-hmm. Esther was Mordechai's niece and she's in with the king. And they're told that they're all going to die on Adar and Purim. So Mordechai now, he gets to, to basically that's what he's doing, he's crying <laughs> and begging for mercy. And at this point, Mord, uh, Esther sends him clothes mm-hmm. to wear. Um, and he declines the clothes and he stays crying on the floor. Um, and then, okay, this, I'm missing out the big pieces of the story, but, but um, wow, if I'm just giving to the end, basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. at the end of the story, uh, I start invites Haman to a feast together with Um and then, and then she wouldn't. T- Excuse, it's difficult to summarize in one story, but mm-hmm. at the end of the day, she says, Haman is trying to kill, so someone trying to kill all of our all of our people. And um and and it's Haman. And then Akashwarish says, Is Haman trying to kill you? Okay, let's kill him. And he hangs him up on the tree. And then Haman dies, and Mordechai rises to power. I over summarized it and simplified it. It's a much, much better story than that, and there's a lot into it. I really, want, I really should get you something. The really miracles of Purim. Yeah. Well, I'm going to see if I can get it for you. 
Sorry? Or well, find a book. Yeah, it's very important. It might be in the back of my homage. It might be in my homage. Yeah. Maybe. I need to check. Which homage do you have? Which homage do you have? The, um, the, the, the blue the, one. The, the purple one. Um, okay, maybe. Have a read through that. So <laughs> this why well, one point of the story. Just bear with me, because this is important for the lesson for the future. There's a lot of ups and downs in the Megillah. The life of some of the Torah life. Okay, so have a look at that. Yeah. We're on the recording now, so I want everyone else to enjoy the rest of this year yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, back to the story. When she sends him clothes, she hears that he's outside on the floor. And she says, sends him clothes. And he doesn't accept it, and he sends it back. Now the question is, why is she sending him clothes? He's not homeless. He's got clothes. He's got a suit in his cupboard. He's decided to wear sackcloth. And sit on the... He's decided to go wear sackcloth and ashes and sit on the floor and cry. Because there's an evil decree of Haman to kill all the Jews. It's not a time to wear Shabbat clothes and suits. Why is, why is Esther sending him clothes? It's not, it's, not a, it's not a homeless person that doesn't have clothes. He can get dressed if he wants to. But he's decided not to. So why are you sending him clothes? You like making a joke out of him. It's like taking the mix. You appreciate the question, Joe? Yeah. yeah. It's random. <laughs> Very random. Why, why are you sending him clothes if he doesn't want to? If he wants to wear clothes, he'll wear clothes. It's not like he needs your clothes to get him dressed. Yeah. Right? Like somebody sitting on the floor and he's shut up crying. You go bring him a chair. It's not, I, don't, I don't want a chair. I want to sit on the floor. I'm in the middle of crying. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, we got someone joining us. Is that Menachem? Marishma. Yeah, we're just in the middle of thank a question. You. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you for joining us, Menachem. And we just explained that the, the blessed. This is the problem we're supposed to take with us for the whole year round. Ebit Hakutna said there's no Havdala at the end of Purim because you're supposed to take the message of Purim through the whole year. So I'm going to say exactly. one message we take from the Megillah. Okay? Now, if you remember, the one stage it says that Mordechai Ilbash Sak Ba'efer Ve'itzeh Betochayim Ve'itzak Tzaraka Gdola Umara. You remember that part of the Megillah? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Maybe only that part. So, okay. yeah. Now, so at that point, Esther sends him clothes. He says, She sends him clothes <laughs> to, get him, <laughs> to get him dressed. Okay, and he doesn't accept it. Why doesn't he accept it? Ah, okay. <laughs> So Menachem's got a nice explanation. He says, get on the floor, you're making a... You're making a <laughs> I like that. Well, okay. man, I, you don't but get it, she, I'm doing it. Okay, no? <clears throat> no, but why is she sending him clothes? He's not a little homeless guy who doesn't have clothes. He doesn't want to wear clothes. He's sitting on the floor for a reason, right? He's crying like Tisha B'Av because there's a decree to kill all of Am Yisrael. So he's sitting on the floor trying to do Shuvah, pray to God to save him. And you're sending him clothes. If he wants to get dressed, he'll go up and get dressed. He doesn't need to send him clothes. Why are you sending him clothes? You should send him a message, Mordechai. I don't understand why on the floor, why are you sitting there? Ask for an explanation, but don't send clothes. And you see, Mordechai sends it straight back. So it's like she's taking them in. Sending him clothes. The, He's not homeless. Why, why does he sit over there and not in a different part of town? Because they're sending messages to each other by the actions. Okay, so what are you saying? I'm, I'm asking a simple question. Why did she send him clothes? If he wants to get dressed, he'll go up and get himself. He's a big boy, he'll get dressed. He doesn't want to wear any clothes. Was He's specifically he, sitting on the floor for a reason. Wait, is, was he naked? No, he was wearing sackcloth and ashes. Right. It, it's, 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 it's clothes that you wear when you're mourning on Avelut, right? It's like it's, it's, uh, it's clothes for doing tshuva. Right? It's humbling. Mm -hmm. Okay, so listen to this. This is a beauty, and this is really a turning point uh, in understanding and Ashkafa. And this is the message we're supposed to take with us. Menachem, listen to this. You're going to love this. Ayapo, there was a machloket 
a dispute, a disagreement between a star and a Mordechai, how to approach uh, a difficult time. Okay, Ashkafa, Machloket Ashkafatit. Ech mit modedim im tsar, le makom shel tsar. What are you supposed to do? So Mordechai says, listen, I need to change this decree. I need to sit on the floor, cry, do tshuva, cry to Hashem, crying. Uh, please save us. That's why I need to sit on the floor. And Esther says, no, that's not the attitude. He said, get up on the floor, get dressed. Go be samech, be besimcha. And what was the reason for that? Esther said, listen, we believe, and this is a, a Jewish uh, lesson, Baruch Hu, this is the whole lesson of the Megillah. HaKadosh Baruch Hu makdim, which means lemaka, which means God sends a remedy, a cure, before He sends uh, the illness or the the difficulty or the decree. That means there's already a cure beforehand, and that's why before Haman rises to power, Esther is already in the palace in the queen. She's the queen, right? We already ditched the Vashti in the beginning of the Megillah. Okay, and then uh, before Haman raised the power, already you got Esther inside. And Mordechai is all a setup because Hashem is Magdim Refua Le Makkah. So Esther says to Mordechai, listen, we have Emunah. We have trust in Hashem. Don't stand on floor crying. That's not the attitude. Where's your faith in God? Get up, be happy, thank God for all the things, and, and wait, wait for the Yeshua will come. Now Mordechai didn't agree with this. He sent back the clothes and he said, I'm not wearing this. I'm staying here and I'm crying. Now the Tiferk Lemosh Shlomo, the Rabbi Shlomo Miradomsk, he says this and he asks, he says, who was right? Hmm. Esther or Mordechai? I, I guess, I guess the, the, the answer is both. The question is when. When? Okay. I'll accept that answer. I, have, I can't decide who's right, Mordechai or Esther, but Rabbi Shlomo Meredomsky says, Mina Shamaim, Gilu, the Esther, that she was right. And what's the proof? What's the proof? Okay. He said, because. Okay. Go on, what do you want to say, Menachem? Esther eventually asked everyone to do that. Nachon, very good. She said, Very good. She accepted it. That's what Mordechai told her. But fine. Okay. That's what she told him to do. But it could be that was in Ishtadut. So listen to this idea, Menachem. The Tiferet Shlomo, he said that Hashem proved Mina Shamaim that Esther was right. Because he sent Haman to Mordechai and he said, Kacha la isha la isha okay. Go and be happy. Yeah. Yes. Take it in Not town, only get dressed. Exactly. exactly. I said, I said, I, the king of Hashver sent Haman to tell Mordechai, get up, get up on the floor, wear the king's clothes, not just normal, your Shabbat suit. Wear the king's clothes, go on the king's horse Beautiful. and go praise. And he said, that's when it started the Geula. The Geula started when you come out of your of your sadness and you come up and you make yourself happy and you go be simcha with you. That's how the whole Yeshua comes up. Now, I'll give you these three, three proofs, okay? Proof number one. You ready for this? You ready? Yeah. Proof uh, one one. How do you know Esther was right? So that was one proof. Mina Shemaim, they decided that they, they showed them, listen, you're going to get up and you give him a horse, give him clothes, give him king. And that's how the whole thing switched. Another proof is like this. We say, excuse me. <laughs> where is Hashem's presence? Hashem's presence is where there's happiness. There's always strength and chedva is, is happiness. There's no sadness in front of HaKadosh Baruch you want to be with Hashem, you got to be happy. That's why Rav Nachman gives a, bit, a teaching. Mitzvah gedola. Liyad b'simcha tamid. Why? Why? Because when you want to, you want to pray. You want to pray with happiness. Always be happy. That is the time. That's how your prayer is going to be accepted. Yeah, he said. Yeah. That. Okay. That's what I was just about to. Oh, you know what were you going to say? You said, you said because uh, he wanted. Uh, I can't remember what, what it was about. Someone was praying. He wanted him to continue praying. Yes, it's very good, Joe. Yeah. That's the Gemara Megillah. The Gemara Megillah says that Haman was uh, Haman came to deliver the news to Mordechai that he's got to go. And he let him continue praying because it was sad. And in the, and Mordechai was in the middle of praying. He was in the middle of praying Mincha, 
And Haman Rasha is just sitting there waiting for him to finish. Right. So the Ben Yoyada is the Ben Ishchai. Says I don't understand what Rasha Merusha Haman. Suddenly you, got, you got time to wait and listen to Mordechai praying his mincha and then finish. Tell him to stop. The king said you have to go go on a horse, and uh, you have to stop. Why did the stop his tefillah in the middle? Joe, yeah, what's the answer? Because he was sad and he, he knew that God wasn't going to listen to his prayers if he was sad. Yes. <laughs> and and Ham, Haman knew that if he would stop him and tell him, listen, the king wants you to go on a horse where his clothes, he's going to be happy. And he doesn't want him to play, pray from happiness. Because even <laughs> Haman Arasha says the Ben Ishchai knew that he doesn't want Mordechai to pray to fill out with Simcha. He says, that's the important lesson when we're going to pray. Okay, tomorrow morning you're going to go to Shachrit. It's a powerful and you're, gonna, <laughs> and you're gonna say, Listen, I'm tired, I'm in a rush, I've got no time, can't be bothered. And then you're gonna remember that the Benish Chai said Haman didn't want you to pray Basimcha. And you're gonna put a smile on your face, and you're gonna read it fill with a smile on your face. And Hashem is gonna see that smile, and you're gonna see how all the fillers is gonna go to the highest place possible. Mm. Now I'm gonna give you now remis, beautiful remis for this. Remis in the Megillah. Uh, the Gaon with Vilna says, every time he says HaMelech in the Megillah, who is he referring to? Hashem. Okay. Yes, so you see, you read that throughout the Megillah, many times it says HaMelech Achashverosh, HaMelech Achashverosh, but sometimes it doesn't say Achashverosh, it just says HaMelech. Okay. Now, on the, on the context of Pshat, it's referring to the king, which was Achashverosh. But on the deeper level, it's always referring to, in context of HaMelech, the king, Melech Machia, Melechim HaKadosh Baruch. Right, you heard this concept before? Menachem, you with Mother? me? Yeah, yeah, I'm listening. Are you with yeah, me? No, I'm, yes. Hamelech is referring to? to Hashem. Hashem, okay. So listen to this pasuk. When Mordechai is outside with the sackcloth, Vayavo ad lifnei sha'ar hamelech. Ki en lavo el sha'ar hamelech bilvush sak. Achazak, achazak. So that, if you find that in the context of the king of Hashem, Mordechai, he couldn't only go up to the point before the gates of the king of Hashem. Yeah. You can't come to the king when you're wearing sack clothes. You can't come to the king. You want to be with Hashem, you got to get happy first. So that is another proof for Esther. I'll give you another example. Miriam, when uh, Bat Paro came to take out Moshe, right? she said, okay, this boy is not eating. What are we going to do? Suddenly pops out from nowhere, Miriam. What is she doing over there? What is she doing? What is she doing hanging around? She, she was waiting to watch. Says the Chafetz Chaim that when she was told to put Moshe in the water, she knew there's going to be something happening now. She was like waiting for the action. Miriam had the emuna. There's no way this baby's going to die. Hashem wants this baby to save and I'm going to see what's going to happen, how he's going to be saved. And she had that faith. It was like, she knew he was going to be saved, but she was like waiting to see how it would be. You know, when you're watching a movie, okay, and the, the good boy guys are losing, now you don't understand how they're going to get out of this, right? The trap is like, you're, you're a bemetach. Uh, how do you say? You're in suspense, right? Mm -hmm. What's going to happen? Because you know they're going to be happy ending. Of course, they're going to be in the win, and then they're going to win. So you're just waiting to see the action, how they're going to get out of it. So Miriam was saying that to see... Uh -huh. How Moshe would be saved, and then of course he was going to be saved. Of course he was saved. She's waiting to see the nest. Now the same thing is when we read the Megillah. Evel gadol la'yodim. Som ubechi umisped sak ve'efer yutzal arabim, which means there was a mourning for the Jews. There was fasting. There was crying. There was misped eulogies. Sak ve'efer. Now, when we're reading the Megillah, do we feel sad? Do we feel tense? Do we feel any pressure? We're crying. No one's crying in the Megillah. Why? Because we know there's a happy ending. So the same thing, again, at the says that in the time of the Mashiach, it's going to be, the end is going to be like a Gula Atida. It's going to be like a Gula of Purim. Um, and you see, that's why it's called also Megillah Tester. It's not called Megillah Mordechai. <laughs> That's another proof you see. Esther was right. You see that from the Pasuk, like we see also from Miriam. 
And that it's called Megillat Esther, and also we see that Mordechai was wear, made to put on the king's clothes. So according to the Tikkun Shlomo, Esther was right in the Hashkafa. A person should be happy. Now, what is going to do with the future? Purim is finished. Okay, we finished. We're coming up to Chodesh Nisan, Chodesh Ageula, Ben Nisan Nigalu, Ben Nisan Atidin Legael. We're waiting for Mashiach to come any minute. Which means at the end, the Gula is going to be like it was in the beginning. And you see Esther, it says, after all of the crying, at the end of the Megillah, which means they did to their enemies whatever they wanted. At the end, the enemies were in their hands. Now, if you look at it today, you know how much we're suffering, all the Jews in Israel and around the world, and what you want to do with your enemies. At the end of time, you'll be able to do whatever you wanted. Whatever you want, you'll be able to do. There's not going to be any crying or any sadness. The Ashkenazim have a minhag, part of the Megillah, they read in the tune of Megillat Echa. It's like a bit sadder. And there's a lot of ups and downs in the Megillah. And you see when, you know, suddenly you don't know what's going to happen. It's like instability in the kingdom. When Vashti gets killed, Big Tan Materesh gets killed, uh, Esther gets captured and taken into the king. You don't know what he's going to do with her. One day he'll, get, he'll kill her like Vashti. That's the end. And he said he's going to kill all the Jews. Now what we're going to do. And at the end, when you see the Megillah, you see everything happened for a reason. It was all a setup to save the Jews. And in the end, everyone did Shishuba. They were all invited for the feast. The Chachamim said, don't go to the feast. They didn't listen to the Chachamim. And in the end, they saw they were Chachamim were right. In the end, they already accepted at the end to listen to the Chachamim. So at the end, everything became clear. Now, there wasn't any spectacular miracles. Okay? And this is the joke. We are, we are also this in the beginning. There wasn't any Kriyat Yamsuf. There wasn't any open miracles that you see, wow, this is God. But you do see very clearly that God sets up everything. And there is clear, you see, Hashem is makdim refuah lemaka. Now we look around and we say, what's going on in the world? Right? Everything is, is just changing. Right? Cor just Corona set up everything upside down. Uh, we see the different, um, how do you say, the, the leadership in different countries is changing, the politics is changing upside down, and everything is turning around, and there's like instability in the world. Now, Hashem is doing all of that. It's all setting up, and a lot of things we don't understand, but at the end, everything will become clear, just like the Megillah, because the Gula is going to be like the end of the scene in the Megillah. That's when everything's going to be revealed. Now, we're just going to wrap it up now. When Mashiach comes, says, Olam kemin hagon Means things will just come around. And what does it mean? We, at the end, when Mashiach will come, we'll see how everything happened for a reason. Not only that there's going to be great, good things for Am Israel, like we see in the Megillah at the end, the Kula Mitiahadin, everyone wants to be Jewish, and all the enemies are afraid from the Jews, and Jews come on top of the world. But you'll see how everything, all the things that we thought were bad, you know, we thought Esther was captured, that's bad, really, that's good. Because that's what saved us in the end. And so to now, all the things that we don't understand, at the end we understand that what, what, what was the purpose for them. It was part of the setting up of the plan. And that is the greatness of the Megillah. The greatness of the Megillah is that even you see that the bad things are really good. And Latid Lavo will see that there is no bad. Everything is good. It's not like there's, there's going to be no more Tzarot. It's not just they're going to stop the Tzarot and there's going to be big miracles. We're actually going to see how the tarot, the things that we were crying about, the things that we were upset about, the things that we were sad about, you're sitting on the floor crying like Mordechai, you see that was, that was just part of the miracle. And that's what it means that the, the Megillat is terloit batel le'olam. So Bnei Yisachar, he was one of the Pirushim of the Hasidim, he says, why is it called Purim al Shem HaPur? Pur, he calls it Shum al Shem HaPuranut. Puranut is, is the bad things. The decrees, the evil part. Now, why are you calling a festival on, on, the, on the difficult part? Call the festival on the name of its uh, of triumph, uh, of, of, the, of the success, of the freedom. 
right? The, the day of, of liberty, right? Why are you calling it on the day of Puranut? Because that's the message of Purim. The message of Purim is that even the Puranut, even that's good. That's Vinahafokhu. The Puranut, you think it's bad, there's no bad. It's only good. And that's what you see, Az Yamalais Chokpinu. When do we say Az Yamalais Chokpinu? When Mashiach comes. Why are you gonna, what's going to be so funny? What's going to be so funny? Az Yamalais Chokpinu, what's funny? Because do you remember what, all the bad things that happened when you were growing up and all the things that you saw in the world and things that we were crying about? That was, that was good. That was part of setting up of the plan. You see the amazingness and you see that so clearly that it's going to be funny. Oh, we were upset about that. <laughs> That's so funny. We were crying about that. You know, think about it. Yeah, I'll give you an analogy. You know. uh, there, I may have said this before. There was a king, he went out. He had the, like a crazy advisor. He was a little bit fanatic, but he always used to say, Gamzul Tova. Yeah, and he was a graduate. Everything was Gabzul Tava. He's a happy guy, always happy, always out. Gabzul Tava. Now the king goes out hunting. He takes his advisor with him. He loved him. Hey, well, no one else liked him. He was a bit of a, you know, an annoying guy. And the king went out hunting. Um, and he had a rifle. And his rifle, one, the back fired the gunpowder, and knocked off his finger, his thumb. Now everyone was was thinking, okay, this is a sign. We've got to get you better. This is, you know, this is getting dangerous. We've got to stop. Uh, we're going to get you to a doctor. They bandaged him up. And then he asked the advisor, what do you say about this? He says, I don't, I don't know. Gamzul Tova. And he said, listen, what do you mean, Gamzul Tova? I lost my finger. You crossed the line. You've gone too far. They said, dig a pit. In the middle of the forest, we said, we're going to teach it. We're going to throw you into the pit and you're going to stay here. And they threw him into the pit and he can't get out. And they said, we're leaving you here till you die. What do you want to say before we go? Gam he says, <laughs> He said, you're taking the mic now. He says, Gam Off they go. And they carried on in the hunt. Now, at one point, the king was charging on his horse. He was chasing one of the animals. And, uh, and he, he went off on his own. And he left the rest of them. And he went deep, deep into the forest and they couldn't keep track of where he was on his own. And he got lost into the forest. And eventually he reached a, a band of cannibals. They captured the king. They didn't know he was a king. They just thought he was a man on a horse. They captured him and they started getting the, the big cauldron ready. They're going to have a feast tonight, these cannibals. And they stripped the king. They're about to put him in. They take off his bandage on his arm and they find the guy is missing a finger. And they say, this guy, he, he is blemished. He's not going to taste good. We're not going to eat this guy. So they set him free. They set him free. And then he realized that the fact that he lost his finger actually saved his life. He felt, he felt stupid. And he went back to get his advisor. And he came back to him. He said, listen, I owe you an apology. And you are right. And they took him out. And he said, just explain to me one thing, though. I understand it's Gamzula Tavada that my finger got knocked off. But why was it Gamzula Tavada that you stuck in here? You know, you're here overnight. You're by yourself. You're cold. You're hungry. Why is that Gamzula Tavada? He said, well, listen, King. If you wouldn't have thrown me in the pit, I would have been with you. If we were to get caught by the cannibals, they wouldn't have eaten you. They would have eaten me. <laughs> exactly. And that's why I wanted nice. you to laugh. Because I wanted you to understand what does it mean, as Yamales Chokpino. All the things that we're crying about now. What do we cry about? We should cry about for our troubles. Exactly. We cry about our businesses, about our children, about our shalom bayit, about our parking space. Uh, I don't know. We have a lot of things we cry about. Yeah. But at the end, it's all going to be a joke because we see how that makes us a better person. It makes us uh, the completion. Is that no, Yeah. So let me just wrap up this year. If we, if we understand, what is the Rashi Tevot? Rashi Tevot, the, the letters of the beginning of the words. Pinu Ulshonenu Rina. Pinu Ulshonenu Rina. Rashi Tevot. Come on, Menachem, help me here. Who? Who? Exactly. Pinu Ulshonenu Rina is Pu. Purim is going to tell you 
uh, is going to be the law at the end. Everything is going to be for the good reasons. And you see that the day of Purim is like the day of the Geulah. Because we're laughing. Why do you make jokes? The halakha says you make jokes. Why are you making jokes? Because it is going to be a big joke at the end. That's why we make jokes. Why do we get dressed up? Fancy dress. Why? We don't recognize each other. Because you don't recognize God. You don't recognize that in your difficultness and your troubles, there's God behind that. You don't realize it is Haman. There's behind that, there's a Mordechai. And why is there a reason to get drunk on Purim? What's the point of getting drunk? It's, you know, we're not allowed to get drunk, halakhically. And here it's a mitzvah to get drunk because you're not supposed to know there's the difference between Aru Haman and Baruch Mordechai. Everything is a Kaddish Baruch Hu. En Tov, En Ra, Adolo Yada. Adolo Yada, everything is a Kaddish Baruch Hu. Everything is a Kaddish Baruch Hu. That's the Deopum Fiyan and Degulam. Sorry? The best explanation for the Adolo Yada I've heard so far. Yeah, this is this is Adalaya now. You're supposed to realize that everything's from a Kodesh Baruch Hu. There's no that. That is la Abdil. Adam Khonin la Adam Daat. We say in Avdala. We say Avdala Abdil Bil Kodesh Achol Ben Israel. I mean, at the end of the day, it's Haman who brings us the beautiful hug of Purim. And Haman is just a messenger of a Kodesh Baruch Hu. And a Kodesh Baruch Hu is a Kol Tov. And why is it Tov? Because it's bringing us to completion, to Adam Hashalem. Uh, maybe I'll just end off with one thing. The the Rabbi Shlomo Zaman Orbach. Somebody came to him with his troubles in Yeshiva. He says, listen, I'm having a hard time. And he said to him, listen, with, if you ever seen a, um, a tailor making a, a, a suit, he said, what does he do? He takes a beautiful, beautiful piece of garment, beautiful cloth, stunning color. What does he do? Starts taking a pair of scissors, cuts it up. Small pieces, big pieces straight pieces, crooked pieces, curvy. Now the guy looking at the side, he says the guy is destroying the beautiful material. He's ruining it. He's messing it up. He started crying. Now if you wait till then, you see, when he stitches it up, it's a beautiful suit. He said, that's what we do. When Hashem needs to make us to to, to reach perfection and completion. So sometimes he needs to cut up a little bit. But at the end, it's just to build you up. Sometimes, you know, we need to break apart in order to put us back together into a better position. It just makes us better people for who we are. Everything that we do. That's a good explanation. That's a good so I hope you enjoyed this year. But that's why we're all going about. We're all going to to, to improve ourselves, and that's what it, what we're all about. And that's the message for putting that we take out through the whole year. So next time you have a tara, okay, what's the approach? Just remember the Esther approach. Instead of crying, and then okay, take out your tailim, fine. But read it like the Megillah. Read it with Sim Chasid Hashem. I know this is for my best, and I thank you for it. I want to say Ms. Molitoda. Unless you see, you'll sail through everything. And that you, you automatically Hashem is with you. If Hashem is with you, automatically you'll be Sim Everything that's already the beginning of the Yeshua. You've already become a better person from that. Um, it's already getting late, but I would like to just end off maybe one message on uh, Parashat Para. Because this week is Shabbat para, Shabbat of the cow. <laughs> now, what's what, what, you know? We're not in India now. What, what Jewish people think about Shabbat of the para? What's this all about Shabbat para? Got anything to do with the golden calf? A little bit. You got a little bit because actually Rashi says that the the para golden calf was the sin of Am Israel. But here we're talking about para aduma. Para aduma is the ashes. Of the para which came to purify from the dead body. Okay, it was still and this is for. sorry. It was still look, the the para that, para that we're still looking for, the red cow. Yes, so there was 10, 10 red cows in history. Uh, there was already nine, and the tenth one we're gonna when Mashiach comes, we're gonna have the paraduma, and that's gonna make us uh, pure. We lost Menachem. Okay. Okay. So you need to go in five minutes. Are you interested to hear this, or we just stop here? Yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm here. I'm sorry, I'm, okay. I'm eating because I've got to go to. No, the no okay, it's okay, fine. If you don't mind me eating, I'm sorry. It's fine. But yeah, I'm here. Absolutely fine. I'm just explaining because this has got to do with the asked in the beginning. Anyone who's you said anyone, anyone who's impure can't do the korban pesach. So you have yeah. to have a tar beforehand. Now we can't do tar right now. Tahara is purity. Now we can't get pure because we don't have a paraduma. 
So how do we get pure? Mikveh. So we have a way to do mikveh, exactly. But mikveh doesn't help as much as the... the... Mikveh can only help you on a certain degree I've of just, impurity. But with time I made, I've, I've just we can never reach impurity. He got, he got disconnected. Sorry? Avi said he okay. got disconnected. Who's Avi? So, yeah, I, I he's just now realized my internet got disconnected in the house and I was on he's, the Wi-Fi, so it took me off. You know. uh, his his okay. first name is Menachem. His middle name is Avi. The Khan Avi. Avi. We call him Avi in synagogue. Okay. <laughs> just, uh, Wait, so what? Sure. Not, Rabbi Natana asked if uh, why I called you Avi. Ah. <laughs> Wait, so what's, what's your full name? We'll test, we'll test Joe. So that will go. Menachem Avi, Menachem Avram Israel. But what's your full name? Menachem Avram Israel. Israel is family name? Barmucha. Barmucha? Okay. Menachem Avi Israel Barmucha. Okay, and how would you like us to call you? How do you want to be called? Menachem. <laughs> Menachem Avram Israel. Okay. Avi will do. Avi will do. Menachem Avram is a game killer. She wants to give over Shem, Avram Israel, but the should be Menachem for Avram Israel. Okay. So we're just talking about reading Parashat Para. So we explained that the Para is talking about the Parashat Para Duma, which makes us pure. And before we come to the Korban Pesach, which is Chodesh Nisan, Chodesh Yolah, we need to become pure. Now, we cannot become pure nowadays. Joe said we can go to Mikveh. Mikveh is only one level of purity. But you can only go so far with Mikveh. You need the Parah Duma to take you out of the Tumah Met. We are all contaminated Tumah Met. That's why none of us are allowed to go to Harabait, because we're Tumah Met. We have to have the Parah Duma. Okay, so we go to the Mikveh for Tosefet Tahara. But the Tara that we need from Tumat Met, that's why there's no laws of Tumat Tara nowadays, because we do not have the Paraduma. That's what we're waiting for. Now, if you don't have the Paraduma, we say, Parim Sefatenu. By reading the Parasha of Para, that's how we become pure nowadays. And that's why we read in the Parasha, we says, Chukat Olam twice. Chukat Olam means that read this Parasha of Paraduma always applies. Even if there's no better Mikdash, we can do Paraduma. Even if there's no Paraduma, we can read the Parasha Paraduma and get pure from that. And that's what we need to do on this week. Now, when we talk about the Paraduma in, a, in, a, in the Maftir, it's talking about the Paraduma which purifies us from Tuma of Met, from a dead person. But the Haftarah, what does the Haftarah talk about? Haftarah talks about Tara purity from sin, from Avonot. Now, always there's a connection between the Maftir and Haftara. Okay? Or the Haftara and the Parasha. Uh -huh. So, here, what's the connection? And you see, the uh -huh. main purity that we need to purify ourselves from is the purity of, the, of, of our deeds, of our hearts. Hashem said, He will purify us. That's what we're asking for, for a new heart. And, and, and this, this, uh, this, this Tahara purifies us and saves us from the, from the Tumah of, of the, of the Cheta of Etadat. When original sin, when Adam ate from the tree, that's why he brought uh, death to the world. Because his punishment was death, Mavit. Otherwise he was supposed to live. And because he ate from the tree, that's why he got no mavit. But that was because he sinned. So the tuma, the impurity which comes from sin, that caused the death. Um, and Rabbi Tzadok says when we milublin, the pre he said when we read the parasha of para, which is going to be this week, that helps us purify our heart. That's what saves us. And I'm going to just end off with one last thing. Shlach Kadosh. Shlach Kadosh says that even when there's no Efer Para, like nowadays, but a person can still become pure by learning Torah. Torah can, can purify anything. And how do you see that? So there's two Remas into this. One Remas is part of the purification process that they used to have seven-day period of purifying. 
And they used to sprinkle him with uh, paraduma on the third day and on the seventh day. Now, on the seventh day, that's purity. Where, where do we see that? Seventh day is Shabbat, right? Seven days is Sheva Nekim for the Ta'af of the Mikdah. So we see seven is pure, but where do we see three is pure? Where's three? So the Gemara says in Shabbat, on that Pechet, there's a famous Gemara, that the Hashem gave the Torah, which is three, to the people which is three, Aliyadei Tlita'a, Bayom Tlita'a, Bayachat Everything was three. The Torah is three because you have Torah, Nevim, Ketubim. Hashem gave it to the people which is three, Kohanim, Levim, and Israeli. According uh, to the, on the third one of the family, which was Miriam, Aaron, and Moshe, in the third month, which was Nisan, Yar, and Sivan, the Yom Klita, on the third day, I don't know what it means. No, the because they had three days beforehand where they were separated from their wives. And that's why who eat khata shlishi. That's why we become pure on the third day, which means we can become pure on the third day by being pure through the Torah. And the Orachim Akadash he says there's three ways that we can make things pure. One is through mikveh, one is through Hagala, and one is through Libun. Now, when you what does that mean? When you get uh, if you get killing from you get killing from a non-Jew or not kosher what do you need to do? First thing is you need to overlap in the mikveh. Second thing is if they absorbed through heat, then you have to do hagala. Hagala is you put them in boiling hot water. But if they were on a fire, the only way to purify them is through libun, esh. Libun is uh, from fire. So you say Torah is in libun. Kod varai esh. Someone who learns Torah, that's like a fire. That cleans the heart from all the impurities. Studying the Torah is the best thing that can clear everything in the Shema. So when we're reading now this week Shabbat Parah, what are we thinking about? We're thinking about that. We're reading the Parah. The Parah is what we want to purify ourselves when we have when we come ready to serve Hashem before the Korban Pesach. And nowadays we don't have that, but we still have the Parashah Parah. So it's important, Aliyah, if you can get the Aliyah of, of the Parashah Parah, that will be purified for yourself. But not only purified for the sin, but also purified at the Lev. Because the Ikari is the Lev. Rahmana li babai. And also we learned the importance of studying Torah. Because the studying of the Torah, that's the way it can purify everything. Like Libun, even more. So I thank you for joining me this year. I hope you enjoyed it tonight. Thank you for joining us. Menachem Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you, Joe. Amazing. Thanks. What, did, Thanks so what did you quote from the Shla? Do I ask him? Oh, yes, Nahon, Shla Kadosh, that on the third day of Nita, what was the sentence? It, it was the Gemara. Gemara said that the Torah is represented by the word three, by the number three. Everything was oh. three. Third month, third month. Third month. Yes. Torah Nevi Ktuvim. So he said three is corresponding to the third day of Tara, which is the Torah. So we say just like the, the Torah, just like the, the Paraduma was cleaned on the third day, was oh. sprinkled on the third day. So three represents the Torah. The Torah is also not a method of purification. Okay. We just, the, the Shlach Kodesh said that when a person comes pure, so you sprinkle on him twice, on the third day and the seventh day. So seven day we understand because seven days Shabbat is the Purusha of Torah for the Nida. But for the third day, what's third day? Third day is representing of Torah because Torah is purifying and Torah was given on the third by the number three. Um, i just like to invite everyone. Um, Joe is going to arrange a, a live shiur in London. Next week, Bezrat Hashem, I'm going to be in London on Thursday night. I'm coming in. Really? Uh, Next week, I'll be God willing in uh, Chazak. Yeah, I'm coming in on Tuesday. Well, on so yeah, we're going to do a live show on, on uh, Thursday, so please bring your friends. And Joe's going to finalize the details. We'd love it's to see you, man. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Thanks for Rabbi. Rabbi. No, if you have a question, now is a good time. It's not a question. It's not a question. It's not a question. It's not a question. Thank you so much. You should write Dvar uh, Torah with the title... The, the, the Esther approach. <laughs> ah, nice. It, it sounds good. I'll tell me. Uh, I'll be nice. Uh, hopefully, going to upload it onto, onto YouTube. The Esther approach. I'll, the I'll, Esther I'll, approach. I'll, I'll, the titles them as well. 
Yeah, okay, cool. Listen, I like that. Menachem, Menachem Avram, Israel. I like yeah. the I like your idea, and I also look for good titles for the shield. So, if you that was a good one, Esther approach. It will catch. You said it. You said it. So it okay, but you said it. I, you I need to understand. When a person this, you should use the Esther approach. Once you understand its meanings, it actually make a great sense. But I, on on all of this topic, I I I, I really um, relate to to uh, to how you said. First of all, in the Hasidut, it says a lot. That there is a a lot more mentioning about what Hashem wants. From this world, כל העולם הזה. מהו הכל אחד? רחמלי בבאי. אבל הוא רוצה שידעו, יכירו בו, ידעו אותו, כל העולם. העצים יודעים מי הוא, האבנים יודעים מי הוא, אבל האנשים... נביא את כל יצור כי אתה יצרתו. יפה, בדיוק. אז אתה עכשיו אמרת שבעצם כל מצב אפשר מתישהו לראות את ה... אפשר, בסופו של דבר הוא לטובה. כן, גם זו לטובה. Yeah. אז נתת את הדוגמה של מה שקורה בעולם. אז אני אומר, דבר ראשון, ברגע ש... קודם כל, נראה לי שיש כלל חשוב שצריך לדעת, I think there is a very important uh, 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 skill one should learn, and is to exercise what you said, how to, in the middle of situation, try and find the, that, what could potentially be, straight away switch to that. So if one is capable of doing that, because normally it's impossible, because you need to wait for the yeah. time for it to happen. But if you're able to start, first of all, change this mode into I'm searching for the outcome, and what could put and then you bring in solution, ideas of what could come out good of it, it's already a, a way out straight away from the Tara. Oh, no, sure. But... Uh, But what you see now, right now, if you look at the idea of everyone should know of Hashem, first of all, the first thing for this olam, to, to be able to, to acknowledge Hashem and to respect and know He exists, you need to remove the big ego, the big government, the big power, the big... The big Haman. So, so before, exactly, so before you can do anything, you need first to show them that they are not in control, this instability shows they are not in control. Without Hashem, the next stage maybe will be a nest, a miracle that Hashem will reveal himself in, a, in, a, in another yeah. אבל משהו אחר אני רוצה להגיד לך, היא עושה את זה בשמחה, כי יש כלל, לדעתי המשפט הזה הוא כלל, כי בשמחה תצאון ובשלום תובלון. כמו שאמרת, בן אדם בשביל לצאת מצרה צריך לצאת בשמחה, כי בשמחה תצאון, ככה זה נראה לי, אפשר לפרש את זה, ובשלום תובלון, ואת השאר כל הזמן שאתם הולכים תלכו בשלום. אז אם הולכים בשלום הכל מצוין, אבל... יפה מאוד, כי בשמחה תצאון, that's beautiful, that's very nice addition to the approach, כי בשמחה תצאון. הרב חיזק, זה היה מבורך. חזק, חזק. תודה רבה לכם, אני מאוד 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 Yeah, I'm just racing. Why are you called call Joe Blank? I don't know. I don't know how to use Zoom, man. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get a crown fitted on my tooth. And picking up uh, some uh, bits here. Um, okay, Joe. So, uh, so please God, we'll see you next week, Bezat Hashem. Please God, Rabbi. Safe travels. Thank you. Now, do you Shabbat want me to bring anything to you from Israel? No. no. Thank you. Uh, you're yeah. good? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'll see you. All right. See you.